everybody, it's Mr. Hefner, and we are still in our modern era unit. Today we're going to do uh, an author that I discovered probably in the last 10 years or so. It's not that he hadn't been around. Other people discovered him. I had just discovered him. And his name is John Dos Passos. It turns out his words were in front of me for a very long time, and I didn't know whose words they, they uh, were. You might remember at the beginning of this course when we did some introductions, uh, I told you that I was a fan of the uh, progressive rock group Rush. And the lyricist for Rush was their drummer, Neil Peart, sadly passed away a year ago. Uh, but anyway, Neil Peart was a voracious reader. And evidently, he really loved literature of the modernist period, and particularly John Dos Passos, because there are a number of uh, Rush songs where little lines and phrases from John Dos Passos end up in the song. And there are a couple songs that even have titles with John Dos Passos uh, uh, concepts. For instance, uh, we'll talk about something called The Camera Eye. And Rush did a piece called The Camera Eye. He, uh, Dos Passos did uh, a collection called The Big Money. And Rush recorded a song called The Big Money. So clearly, the drummer lyricist, Neil Peart, was a, uh, a fan of John Dos Passos. You may not know John Dos Passos. He's a, a really, um, boy, if you like somebody who experiments and goes all out and tries something completely new, as, as authors do in this modernist period, you're going to love him. If you like the traditional, if you like something that's easy to follow and simple and linear, you're probably not going to like John Dos Passos very much. So let's find out what you like, and let's get started. All right, here we are at the start of the presentation. This background that I'm using, I'm not sure if you, you recognize it, but uh, I, I stole it actually from something called a newsreel. And we'll talk about newsreels, uh, but just so you know, this, this is something that you would have seen when you went to the movie theater to see a movie. Uh, there would have been a short news report called a newsreel. They were, they were partly to inform people in the days before television, but also partly to uh, just provide a little entertainment and fill up your afternoon. Uh, but we'll get to that. But that's what the background here is, if this doesn't make sense. In fact, we're going to be reading something from John Dos Passos today called Newsreel. How, how good are you with your uh, Roman numerals here? So you remember how Roman numerals work? Uh, an L, here we go. An L is a 50. And then we have an X, which is a 10. And when a small one comes after a big one, we add it. So it's it's 50 plus 10, that's 60. V is five, we add it. So that's 65 plus three more smaller ones. So that's 68. So this is called Newsreel 68 by John Dos Passos. And it's from his collection that I just mentioned called The Big Money. Now our lesson essential question as we read through this piece today is going to be what elements make Dos Passos' work unconventional? And unconventional means it does not follow the rules of the time. If there's a rule to be broken, John Dos Passos is going to break that rule. Maybe not in the same way as E.E. E. Cummings when we meet him a little bit later on, but he definitely breaks the rules. There's a picture of John Dos Passos born in 1896. So he's born at the end of the 19th century and he lives all the way uh, to 1970. So you know the 70s, big hair and bell bottoms and things like that. Uh, so he lived certainly a, a good long life. Now, the things I want you to know about him, he was born in Chicago, that's not particularly important, but he did graduate from Harvard, so he had an Ivy League education, which means he is truly a man of letters, uh, and he, he writes carefully, reads carefully, thinks critically, you don't get a degree from Harvard unless you can do those things. Just like Hemingway, just like E.E. E. Cummings, he uh, volunteers in World War I to be an ambulance driver and a medic, so he's He's supporting the war effort, but not in, a, uh, not in a way where he's actually fighting. He's trying to help and, and do good things along the way. And this is going to be really important. So I don't know how familiar you are with the artist Pablo Picasso. But Picasso uh, subscribed to a, a school of painting which was called Cubism. At the beginning of this unit, I had a picture of a Picasso. And Picasso art... Uh, is extremely abstract. So if, if you did a portrait of my face in a Picasso style, you might see the back of my head and the front of my head at the same time. You might see the top. One eye might be looking straight at you while the other eye is looking that way. Picasso believed we can take all these different perspectives 
and make them all be one. And, you know, good art, like good literature, isn't easily accessible. You know, uh, you think about this with a song, at least this has been my experience. I hear a song, it's really catchy, I pick it up, I think it's cool, but in a day or two, I'm sick of it. Sometimes there's a song, uh, that maybe this is why I like progressive rock, but sometimes I come across a song that's really hard to listen to. I can't predict where it's going next. It's extremely complex. The lyrics are deep. Uh, and I'm like, whoa, this is a really hard song. But I listen to it, and I listen to it, and I listen to it. And it becomes a favorite, and I listen to it for years and years and years and always appreciate it. So sometimes this stuff that comes to us with the greatest amount of substance isn't user-friendly at first, but it has staying power. And Picasso is one of those artists. Well, Picasso and his style of seeing something from lots of different angles all at the same time actually influenced John Dos Passos. And he's going to write in a way, uh, it's not going to be like a story where everything is chronological and this happens, then this happens, then this, and then it's over. We're going to have all these parallel stories crashing together, happening at one time, images of one thing that's going on in one place while we have sounds of something going on in another. It's not easy to read, but it can be a whole lot of fun once you start figuring it out. So now, what are his contributions to modernism? One of them is, is his, his work is somewhat impersonal. We talked that, about that a little bit with Wallace Stevens. The idea that you could read a whole book of Wallace Stevens poetry and not find one thing that affects your emotions. Part of the idea of this time period was to detach, to present things purely objectively instead of subjectively and let the reader then bring the subjective uh, perspective to things. So it's gonna be uh, impersonal. He uses a lot of what's called illusion. Now we've used that word a lot in this course. And an illusion is any time you reference something that your audience should already be aware of. Illusions don't work if you, if you assume your audience has experience with something and then you reference that and your audience doesn't have that experience. You failed. So you can only use uh, illusion when you're matching it up perfectly to your audience. He's going to do that in here. So uh, as John Dos Passos got into the Great Depression of 1930, stock market crash, 1929, 1930s, before World War II, uh, the United States is in this terrible economic depression. Uh, we have people in this country uh, actually all coming all the way to violence about what do we do about all these poor people? Should the government be helping them? Do we tax people with money to help the people without? Do we let the market work its way out and people just suffer and possibly die? Uh, and there was, there was actually uh, violence in the two groups coming together sometimes. John Dos Passos is going to write in this time. But again, he's just going to show us what's going on. So sometimes he uses these little inserts called the camera eye. And in the camera eye, just like you would take a camera and focus it on what you want the audience to see, he's going to take us in the midst of all this stuff going on in a, a piece that he wrote, and he's going to suddenly take us and focus on something important. So he doesn't tell us what to think, but by turning our eyes towards it, he, help, he does tell us what to think about, all right, if that makes sense. And then I have this word newsreel, and we've talked about this at the beginning uh, twice so far. So newsreels were these usually anywhere from five to 12, 13, 14, 15 minute uh, clips. They were generally in black and white. And what would happen is you would go to a movie theater to see a movie. And just like today, you get some advertisements first and then you might have the coming attractions. In the old days, uh, all the way up through the 1950s, uh, you, would, you would see maybe a couple cartoons, you would say, see a short film, like maybe a Three Stooges, something funny. You would see several newsreels, uh, and this would sort of fill your afternoon. So you didn't just go for the movie and then leave. You might be there for three or four hours, even though you're only going to see a, a 90 minute uh, movie. Uh, but I'll, I'll show you where you can find some newsreels uh, and have a look at what they're like. So uh, The Big Money, third volume in his trilogy, which he called USA. And this one focuses on things going on during the Great Depression. So during the Great Depression, uh, you have many, many people out of work. 
Uh, you have many wealthy people lost everything because they had their money in the stock market and it crashed. And uh, the, this, this paper that said they owned part of a company now says they own part of a country, company that doesn't exist anymore. So it's, it's absolutely worthless. And we need to figure out how are we going to help people? Should the government get involved? Should the government stay out of it? Uh, do we redistribute the wealth of, of the people who maybe, you know, like had invested in something like gold? Gold never loses its value. It, it goes up and down, but it's always worth something at that time. Uh, and the conflicts are going on. So in this piece, we're gonna see lots of different things happening all at the same time. And we're gonna see lots of different perspectives. We're going to see the, uh, the perspective of the president. We're gonna see the perspective of the poor people. We're gonna see uh, just what's going on in popular culture. What music uh, you know, people listen to at the time. What do they do with their time? Uh, we're gonna feel the conflict. Who do the police support when there's a riot? Do they support the people who are in favor of, of helping? The, do they support the people who are in favor of stopping the people who are in favor of helping? Uh, and, and this is just gonna all come crashing at you at one time. Reading a John Dos Passos isn't like reading a short story. It's like living an experience. Like I said, it can be intimidating, but the more you work at it, the more fun it becomes. Now, I can't show a video inside a video here, uh, but I can tell you where to go. Two of the biggest uh, makers of uh, these newsreels uh, back in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s uh, were Movie Tone News and News Parade. And uh, you can't click in a video, you can't click on my little uh, 16 millimeter projector there. But right here it says, if you go to YouTube and you just search Newsreel Archive, it's actually a, a, a YouTube site called Newsreel Archive where people have collected and digitized these old black and white newsreels. Go there and, and watch one or two of them. You'll see what we're talking about because if, if you do newsreel, you know, uh, John Dos Passos newsreel today and you don't know what one is, you're missing the illusion. Because again, illusions only work when the author shares something that the audience knows. Uh, this I just put in here, this, this is a, a newspaper clipping uh, advertising uh, um, what, what's going on at the, uh, at the local theater. So look at this, 67 minutes of fun. What do you get here if you go there for 67? You get three cartoons, Sylvester, Donald Duck, and Casper. You get a Three Stooges comedy, which is probably about 20 minutes long. Uh, you get a, a special film about Bermuda and sailing and what it's like. And then you get three newsreels from the Ace Company. And, and they're listed right here as well. Uh, you know what's missing? A feature film. There's no feature film here. 67 minutes of fun and there's no movie. These newsreels were the thing people went to see sometimes. All right, so, oops, went too far on that one. Let me try that again. There we go. All right, if we were together in class today, what I would do is, is we'd talk about this, but I would ask you what headlines, song lyrics, phrases from TV ads, announcements over the school PA system, billboard slogans have you been exposed to today? We are being bombarded constantly with advertisements. You know, our textbook was written before uh, everybody had access to something like Facebook or any kind of social media or YouTube. And you know, you hate this. When you go to YouTube and you want to watch a good video and all of a sudden the video stops and an ad pops in, sometimes you can wait and you know, you can, uh, you can click this to go away in four seconds. Other times you have to watch the whole thing. We are bombarded with advertisements everywhere we go. And this was something new to this modern era. We talked about that advertising directly to people to come buy their product, uh, to, for companies uh, to make you buy their product, to talk you into it, propaganda in salesmanship and things like that. Uh, we get slogans all the time. We get text messages sent to us and, and, and Twitter messages and things like that. And if you tried to think about all the messages that you were bombarded with in one day, and then you could combine them into one piece, what you would essentially have is a collage not a college, a collage. You remember back in elementary school, you used to cut out magazine pictures and then paste them together on the construction paper and make something new, a big picture made of all those little cut up little pictures. Well, that's a collage, but it doesn't have to be pictures from a magazine to be a collage. Anytime we take little snippets of anything 
and we make something new. It's a collage. And that's what, that's what this piece is going to be today from John Dos Passos. We're going to hear announcements. We're going to hear things happening on the radio. We're going to hear things happening that are being broadcast on the news. We're going to get a, a excerpts from a, a popular song uh, at that time when this is set. And it's all just going to be coming at you at one time as if you're right there being bombarded from all these sources. Now, the literary tools. Well, how about collage? That's the one we just talked about. So the definition here is a collage is a work that incorporates or brings together an odd assortment of materials. It doesn't have to be magazine pictures cut up and pasted together. We could do a collage of current popular songs. We could do a collage of photographs that we take. We could do a collage by, by going to the top books of today and pulling out uh, great quotes and putting them all together in one. And so it can be allusions, quotations, parts of a song, dialogue, foreign words, uh, mythic and folklore. Think that there's a whole bunch listed here. I don't need to read them all. Uh, you see them in front of you. But that's what a collage is. And today we're reading a collage. All right, as you read it, and you might have to read it more than once. Uh, I, I, it, when we're together in class, I read it out loud and I have trouble reading it out loud, even though I've, I've read it probably 30 times. I read it out loud whenever I can. It's a hard piece. I don't, the, the vocabulary is not hard. It's very simple. It's written at the level of a, a news broadcast. The news broadcasts are usually written down around a, a seventh grade or lower reading level. It's the idea that so much is coming at you at one time. Uh, it's hard to stay focused on what's important or even to figure out what is important. That's the subjectivity in it. You need to decide what's important. So I want you to look for features that make this work unconventional. You should be able to do that if you've been listening to me so far. Uh, I want you to look at how the collage technique is being used here. You could write a collage. You know, Just because John Dos Passos did it doesn't mean he's the only one who can do it. Um, and then I want you to figure out how to adapt your reading style as you're doing this, because this is not linear. You cannot just simply go across the page letting your eyes go left to right and then down to the next line, left to right, you're going to have to jump around. You're going to have to go back and reread. You may have to stop completely and ask yourself, what was that? What does it mean? Why is it here? All right. So it's a, when you're reading uh, unconventional stuff, you've got to use non-traditional styles uh, for reading. All right. This is the point in the video, like always, where you should stop don't go on until you've read Newsreel 68, maybe once, maybe twice. Then come back here, unpause the video, and we'll go over the check for understanding questions. All right, so let's check your understanding here. Uh, these questions are very basic. I don't write them, but they're good enough to see whether or not you read the piece. Number one, five workers are killed in a Colorado mine strike. And that's true. Uh, this, this strike actually occurred. This isn't fiction at this point. So Dos Passos is taking things from the 1930s and he's putting them together here. Number two, in the song, the conductor of the train dies as he takes the train around a curve. I did not write the question. This is what I call a, a, a cheap shot kind of thing. It's false. It wasn't the conductor. It's the engineer. Like that really matters. By the way, the song is called The Wreck of the Old 97. It was a famous song at the time. And so uh, even though we're reading something, you're getting the audio in here. You could probably go to iTunes or something like that or go to YouTube, uh, search for the wreck of the old 97 and you can hear what the full song actually sounded like. Uh, number three, the president participated in the dedication of a bird sanctuary. That of course is true. And it's probably in here for contrast. On one hand, you have workers uh, fighting and struggling in order to find jobs, get a decent wage to feed their starving families. And while that's going on, the president of the United States, instead of working on the labor issue, is attending a party to celebrate the dedication of a bird sanctuary. Number four, the economy was good at the time the collage takes place. And of course, that's completely false. Uh, this is right in the middle of the Great Depression. It's the worst economic time uh, America has known in its history. And number five, according to Dos Passos, the working class was oppressed by the upper class. And that is absolutely true. You see that in the piece, especially uh, later on, it seems like uh, when there is strife and the workers are, are trying to stand up for their rights, 
the police actually stand up for the wealthy and defend them and the workers pay the price. So yeah, it was definitely a time of, uh, of clashes between uh, social structures. All right, so multiple choice. Who was jeered by office workers and other construction workers? Well, of course, that's gonna be the police. They're out to put an end to the protests and the workers don't like that. They believe their voice should be heard. Uh, to what does the headline happy crowds throng ceremony refer? And we just mentioned it. That's the dedication of the bird sanctuary. And number three, uh, what do the socialist fakers practice according to the song? Lyrics from another song here. And the answer here is fascism. So these ideas kind of run together. Socialism is often misunderstood. It's, uh, you know, socialism is the idea that in a society, we are social. We, we must live together, work together. The country belongs to all of us, not just individuals. And so uh, the ideas behind socialism is there are certain things we have to do to make sure we take care of our people so that we can in fact be a people. Unfortunately, throughout history, sometimes when socialism, you know, becomes kind of like uh, the enticement, certain dictators have risen up. We end up with something far more severe called communism, where the government actually owns all industry and the means of production and things like that. Uh, and then sometimes uh, whenever revolutions happen, whenever change comes, uh, there are groups that force people to do their will. They use propaganda, they intimidate them, they threaten them, uh, and that would be called fascism. So in, in the song here, uh, whoever wrote the song, who, you know, the, what they're saying is socialism is a lie, it's deceptive, and what we've really got are fascists pushing you into something. Uh, they're, they're really fakers when it comes to socialism, but they truly are fascists. Um, that's, not John Do that's not John Dos Passos's perspective. But again, remember, part of modernism is objectivism. We're going to take out the judgment uh, from the author. The, the author is going to give you the things so that you can make your judgment. So the subjectivism moves over to the reader. Number four, whom did the prosecuting attorney, the judge, and the mine superintendent support? And of course, this is the law and the wealthy. Uh, so it's the law. They support the law. And that was pretty clear at the end. And number five, uh, to what event does the headline President Sees Prosperity Near refer? And the headline Prosperity would be at the end of the Great Depression, so it's the end of the Great Depression. Uh, it actually happened years later. So if you were reading this piece at the time Dos Passos uh, first published it, you would get the irony of that. All right, so that's our introduction to John Dos Passos and Newsreel 68. I hope you found it a little bit uncomfortable. It's difficult to read. And, and if you didn't find it uncomfortable, you probably weren't reading deeply enough. You were probably just looking at the words in order to get it done. I hope that wasn't you. It was probably somebody, but I know it wasn't you. I know it wasn't. You would never do that. All right. Thanks for staying with me through the end, and I will see you next time. We'll see you.